Hey guys and welcome to another tutorial. So in the previous video we talked about the rotating system and we made these nodes here to make the rotation. In this video we'll go over how to make the line tracing so as soon as the lines hit the character it shoots and kills the player. Let's jump right in and get started. Let's open up the blueprint we made and now here we need a line trace by channel. I'm gonna activate it by an event tick node so it shoots a line on every frame of the game. Now we need to define the start and end point of the line. I'm gonna use the spotlight to define the location and the rotation of the lines. Meaning that the line will start from the position of the spotlight and use its direction as well. So let's drag it into the event graph and then get word location. Now we have its location and we can use it as the start point of our lines. For the end value we are going to use the spotlight again but this time we need to get its rotation. Then turn it into a vector, multiply it by a number which defines the length of the line and then add it to the start position of the line. So let's get word rotation, then add a forward vector so we change the rotator into a vector value and then multiply it by a number. For example 2000 which means the length of the line will be 20 meters. Then let's drag a line hit plus to add it to the start position and then plug it into the end input. Let's set the draw debug type on for duration so we can see the lines. Compile, play the level and now we can see the lines coming out of our robot as we wanted. When it hits the objects in the scene, the color will turn from red into green which means that it's collecting information from the scene and we can use it in our logic. Here in the line trace, right click on this pin here and hit the split struct and these are all the different kinds of information you can use from the line trace by channel. The one that we are going to use is this one here. We want to cast to third person character and for the object we are going to use hit actor. What it means is that when the lines hit the third person character, whatever we have here will be called. For example, let's add a print string and now as you can see when the lines hit our character, the print string function gets called. Okay, now let's delete it and make it dead function for our character instead. Let's go to the third person character and here in the event graph add a set simulate physics function. I'm gonna use the mesh as the target and now by triggering this function my character will fall and it will look like he has died. Of course there are other ways to replicate the death animation but for the sake of this tutorial this method will work fine. Here select the mesh, scroll down to the collision tab and then set the collision presets on ragdoll. In order to see how it works I'm gonna right click here and type keyboard. Then let's choose Q and plug it into the simulate physics function. Check simulate and now you can see that when I press Q on the keyboard this will happen and looks like he has died. After he dies we can still give input which feels weird so let's disable input here and for the controller let's add get player controller and now we are good to go. Now when he dies we cannot use the keyboard anymore and everything will stop working. Here we don't want to trigger the simulate physics function with the key and we want to do it with the line tracer we made earlier. So let's disconnect the key and add a custom event instead. Let's name it die and now we can go back to the robot blueprint and here type die and add the function to the event graph. Connect this pin here to the target and let's change the debug type to one frame so it looks a little cleaner. Let's compile and play the game and now you can see that when the line hits our character he dies. Okay we have done the job but here I'm gonna add a sound and we can also add a fire emitter to make it look cooler. Here after the die function we can add play sound 2D and here choose a sound. 
you can import any sound you like but here i'm gonna go with explosion 02 after that let's add a spawn emitter at location here i'm gonna select the default explosion and then hit this magnifier icon to find it in the content browser let's open it up and here you can play with the settings to make it look like a gunshot instead of an explosion I'm not gonna do much, I'm just gonna get rid of the smoke and also the fireball and this is how it will look like without those effects. It works fine so let's go back to our blueprint and give it a location to be spawned at. I'm gonna use the spotlight again and here add get world location. I want the particle to be spawned here under the light which the gun can be. So here I'm gonna type add and then add 30 to the x value and minus 60 to the z value to move the explosion somewhere around here under the spotlight. Okay let's compile and play and yeah as you can see it's working and now we have the sound and the particle effect. As you probably have noticed, they are played more than once, which is not what we want. And we also want the robot to stop after he shoots the player. So let's go back to the blueprint and finish the job. We wanted to play the sound and spawn the emitter only one time. So here before they are called, I'm gonna add a do once node. It means that whatever we have here will be triggered only one time, which is exactly what we want. You can see that now we don't have the repetition of the sound anymore and we are ready to go to the next part. We want to stop the rotation after the line trace has hit our character. So here before the set relative rotation functions I'm gonna make a branch. It means that when this boolean variable is true the rotation will take place and when it is false the rotation won't be called and the head will stop at its location. We want to control this boolean with our line tracing mechanism. So let's make a boolean variable here and name it is alive. It's compiled to be able to control its value and let's put it on true. Now drag it into the scene, hit get and plug it into the branch nodes we made. Again drag it into the scene and this time hit set. Connect it to the emitter function and here put it on false meaning that he's dead. To sum up, what is happening here is that when the character is alive, which is the default situation, the rotations work and after he is hit by the line tracer, the variable will be set on false, which means that the character is dead. And when he is dead, nothing will happen here anymore and the robot will stop. Hit compile play the game and now you can see that everything is working perfect. Here let's put the debug type on none and that's it. That's how I made these killer robots here and I hope you learned something new from the topics I covered in these two videos. Thank you guys for watching and if you enjoyed the video please don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Catch you later.